What is up guys? It's your boy Kittens bringing you guys my new build, Lear, Disciple of the Drowned. And pretty excited about this deck. I took it to my play group the other day and had some pretty good games. I didn't actually win, but I had games where I felt like I was a threat. I felt like I was powerful just doing Lear, Disciple of the Drowned stuff. And I was really happy with this deck, you know, being able to perform just right on day one. So spells cannot be countered really powerful effect it just means you know when you have your disciple out when you start trying to combo or start trying to do powerful interactions your opponents can't interrupt you without something similar to what you're doing and then each instant sorcery spell in your graveyard has flashback and the flashback cost is equal to the original cost which is just fantastic so what i've been doing with the deck and what i try to do just throwing stuff together is a whole number of spot removal cards uh, that just return things to the hand and then a whole number of draw cards to fuel that some cards where it's you know draw cards matter and let's just you know let's just break right into this this is a lot of our removal spells is a chain of vapor clutch of currents allows us to get a little bit of a land if we need creatures use raven form it allows us to exile something because sometimes when the big boys come back it is just a sad day so exiling things is really great sometimes and return target creature or return tapped creature so it hits the you know stuff that's attacking or you know activating for abilities it lets us scry as well unsummon the classic return a creature to hand snap in this deck it's really interesting because it's two for free we can you know return two different things for free and then at the same time we can also generate mana we use something like guildless commons just anything that taps for two it's gonna be awesome and depart the realm, return non-land permanent. So this you know lets us hit other things besides creatures. Non-land permanent, again, very nice. So we draw a card as well. You know, recasting that is awesome. Depths of desire, it costs three, but we do get a treasure. It's nice. It's there. It's, it's a nice, just a little bit of an extra one. Vapor snag, we can burn our opponents a little bit, or we can return our own, um, and then we you know lose one. Uh, tap target creature it doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step this uh, sneakily can be you know taking one big creature out of two different combats you know someone's about to attack you tap the creature so it can't attack and then the next turn it doesn't untap so it can't attack again and that's it can be very nice even though it isn't removing it it does take something out of two combats so now we're into our drawing cards you know things that we can reuse in our graveyard so you know some of these cards you know telling time i don't know if i would use telling time in a commander deck over just a brainstorm right but in, but in this deck because we can reuse them they just become so much more powerful so telling time you know the instant as well so telling time windfall uh windfall using windfall twice yes in this deck thought scour we can mill ourselves get a little bit see a little bit more cards reach through the mists preordain opt read the runes uh you know, we draw and then we discard one the discard's totally fine because we can you know again we can access our graveyard otherworldly gaze lets us send cards from the top to the graveyard giving us access to them and then dig through time uh not a draw card but it is exceptionally powerful to just you know dig through your deck always use dig through time such a good card anticipate ponder minds a glow minds a glow is a great one because you know there's no limit to the amount of cards that you can draw you also make everyone draw so there's a little bit of mill self center like self mill synergies where you can also mill your opponents you know there might get to a point in the game where you want to minds a glow for 20 or something and just make everyone draw a bunch and then uh, we have some of our big cards, our Opportunity and Dragonlord's Prerogative. Super huge mana to just draw four. Not exactly super efficient, but we can use them twice. And in some situations, we do just want to go, all right, well, pay six, draw four, pass. And just refill a little bit of our hand. And then having access to it in the graveyard, I, I feel like it's passable. So far, when I've had them, I haven't actually used the big draw cards. I've just held them and then been able to maintain a hand with them there so uh, i still like it and then cosmos elixir a little bit of that repeated draw you know we don't get to reuse the artifacts with our you know our commander but hey as long as it stays out we do get a little bit of that repeated draw super nice and then what i want to go over i guess is a little bit of the instant sorceries that are, are kind of interesting how to turn the deck into a little bit more powerful spell slinger deck uh flutter of recollection just allows us to get an extra cast out of one of our cards so instead of flashing it back and we get that second cast it removes itself we can bring it back to our hand to cast it a second time and then flash it back get the third cast just for two mana and sometimes that really matters so you know something like confiscation cube to take a third creature that'd be you know a situation where that matters 
And then confiscation creep. This is one of those things where there's a number of, of very exceptionally powerful instant sorcery spells where you just steal a creature, or you just you know do certain things similar to the, similar or different. You know, just power level wise. There's cards that you can put in that are just fantastic. You know, hitting a confiscation coop and just taking one of your opponent's best creatures off off board is just incredibly powerful. And then you know we do the same thing with a uh, wrong turn. So you know some uh, some synergies there. So definitely worth playing. Nemnonic Deluge. And uh, this is one of the times where I have where I use a spell slinger deck. It's just really dependent on casting a bunch of instant sorceries. It's like the only time I've done that. So, oh god, hello Mike. Thing. So <laughs> Memnonic Deluge, yeah. So this, it's just one of those awesome cards. It can win the game just depending on what your opponents have. And in my deck, because we use some of those self-mill synergies where you can also hit our opponents, there is sometimes some really nice hits with Memnonic Deluge. And you can just get tons of advantage with it. All right. And then it does exile itself, so you don't get to reuse it the second time. That would be so busted if it doesn't exile. You, I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> okay. So Coastal Breach, another thing, you know, in this deck, board wipes. Board wipes are so powerful. Uh, I feel like in my deck, I'm running a lot of creatures that I don't need to be running. Um, and what I would honestly do if I was turning this deck to be much more powerful is I would slowly take out creatures for board wipes and more interactive removal so that I would have less creatures and just be unaffected by said board wipes. And, you know, just being able to reuse board wipes is just so gross. Um, okay. So dive down. <laughs> dive down gives us a little bit of uh, protection for our commander. There's actually some redundancy with this card. There's another one-drop blue card that came out of um, uh, the Dungeons & Dragons set that will, uh, that will give your creature hexproof or... Uh, a different effect it's like too different it's hex proof or something else but there's some redundancy here where there's a one drop card that can just from the graveyard protect your commander from being targeted by spells so <clears throat> very fun thing and definitely something to look into if you're building the deck as well wrong turn this card was just absolutely hilarious I mean, literally what happened is one person on the table after my turn played a vorniclex and then I was like, all right, well, I mean, you already have a powerful board state. So I was like, wrong turn. Give the Vorniclex to the person that's like doing the worst right now. <laughs> Literally like used it the second time inside of the same turn cycle. When someone, it was like a turn or two after that, where someone went, all right, well, I'm going to play Avenger of Zendikar. And like he made like 12 plants or whatever. And it was like, all right, well, wrong turn that the Zendikar goes over here. So all the plants stay as zero ones. And it was just... It was so busted. And, you know, I feel like something like Wrong Turn, because we're using Disciple of the Drowned, getting that second cast at some point, it just turns something like this as moderately eh, into something that was was very impactful on a board state where big creatures were coming out. And that is just, it's just awesome. So that is the selection of instant and sorcery cards in the deck that we're going to be reusing and trying to abuse with Lier. And then I also, you know, I put one propaganda in here just to help slow, you know, people's attacks down. My playgroup's fairly ag aggressive and good players. So, you know, something like propaganda isn't super oppressive, always. It just kind of keeps me alive. <laughs> like, uh, and then we play uh, Psychosis Crawler. Psychosis Crawler is possibly one of the strongest creatures in our deck because we have so many um, draw synergies. Once we get Psychosis Crawler out, it's really a matter of playing our draw synergies and making sure Psychosis Crawler doesn't die. I mean, and then sometimes we just win the game. And, you know, one of the games, it was literally just keep Psychosis Crawler alive, draw tons of cards, and, and I died like all the way at the end. It was so close. <laughs> it was so close. All right. But then, you know, it's such a great card. God of the Voyage. Uh, when you play things, or the upkeep, he exiles himself. When you play lands, he gets 1-1 one, one counters. And then eventually, you can have him come in on the land drop where he would get a 1-1 one, one counter. And you draw cards for it. It's, it's so bulky and wordy. It basically is draw cards <laughs> in, a, in a good way. This is like nice and slowly. Uh, Petromander had some nice synergies with the innocent sorceries in our graveyard. Uh, and it can just come out as a 5-5 five, five flyer for 2 which is just very powerful for us. And then Stormwing Entity. We have flying and a little bit of cost reduction for the instant sorceries, a bit of prowess so we can become bigger. We get some scries so we can look at the top and continue doing things. I like that. It's just something that uh, is doing well for me. Ooh. 
yeah, little coffee burps here. <clears throat> oh, and then subtlety. Subtlety is one way that we can uh, counter a spell without countering a spell. So we return a creature planeswalker spell that's uh, so a spell means that it's being cast. So we return that, that card that's being cast to the top or the bottom of the owner's library, um, depending on what they choose. Just super powerful. Um, body of Knowledge. Again, let's just draw a little bit of cards. Gives us the no maximum hand size. Can be a bulky creature at some point if we can really get our draw engine going. Laboratory Drudge, which is really cool. I'm glad I saw this. It, it's just such a, it is literally made for this commander, I swear. At the beginning of your end step, draw a card for each card you've cast from a graveyard or activated an ability from a card in a graveyard this turn. So basically, for each card that we're bouncing, we're, you know, drawing two, three cards. And the times that I've had Drudge out, I've just, you know, went maybe a little overboard and just cast too many things. And then you kind of ran out of graveyard a little bit. But at the end of my turn, I was drawing four or five cards and refilling my hand and i'm not sure how it'll work in the deck other than just being a reliable draw engine i don't i, I just i like it this is such a weird card it works so well in the commander and then uh eon chronicler this is a way to take advantage of our hand size and also um, get repeated draw if we have enough mana in the late game to just you know start getting an upkeep draw for the time counters being removed from eon uh, chronicler Really interesting, fun card. I've been trying to find something to put it into there. So, an Academy Elite. Uh, again, this is another draw card synergy. It comes in with a you know a number of one one counters for the number of instant sorcery cards in all graveyards. You know we have that little bit of light mill synergies that I'll show later. And then uh, removing one one counters allows us to draw and discard. And discard not a big deal for us. We you know we love that. And the Solemn, dude. Solemn is just kind of like this interesting. It's a creature. It's a land. It's a draw. So it's just. It's exactly what we want in this deck. So, and Hedron Crab, <clears throat> the Hedron Crab is a big part of these the uh, the self mill synergies. Uh, I think we already went over some of the spells. We use the um, Thought Scour to mill ourselves as well. But Hedron Crab is one of those ones when we start getting those land drops, we're gonna start milling ourselves for three per land drop and just getting access to more cards. Amphibian Marauder. This is an interesting one because it has Encore himself. Uh, just allows us to spot remove a creature and then in late game when he comes out of the graveyard we can spot remove three different permanents or um it's a target okay it's a target non-salamander so we do we target a creature not a non-land and a profit of distortion an interesting one uh the couple games that i've played i actually get profit super early um haven't been able to really take advantage of his activated ability to draw a card yet but well <coughs> oh, but i'm coughing but um, but I, I feel like it's still a good card. I'm not sure if I'll take him out, but I like this card. Talaran, the Sky Summoner. Relatively powerful, really fun card. You know, you, when you play your instant sorceries, you get a 2-2 blue drake. So that gives us a little bit of inevitability. If you've been, you know, looking through, you can kind of tell there isn't too many, too much of a, a huge win condition. Like there's not like a, I just win or a, a super powerful thing. There's a lot of just draw things and attack. So um, this card, when you attack, you draw a card, very nice. And then other merfolk have ward one. I don't, I don't think there's a way in my deck where it'll matter for merfolk. I think uh, he's a human wizard. So there's a few synergies with that, but um, yeah. So deep sea kraken. This is just a fun one. I feel like a lot of times I can't really play Kraken, but you suspend this guy for three, suspend nine, and then it's an unblockable 6-6. Six, six. Super huge, actually fairly impactful for the deck, specifically because we're gonna be casting instant sorcery spells, and then we also have the ability to cast our spells more than once. So we could like suspend this for three, and then, you know, next, you know, the rotation goes around, a couple counters go, because opponents are casting stuff, and then we go like opt, opt again, find a you know random one drop to bounce a permanent and then we bounce a permanent and then reuse that bounce and that's four spells right there you know for four mana and that's you know and maybe that means deep sea kraken's coming down like the next turn right after we cast it so i just i like it in the deck it's there it's super fun ethereal forager this is a cool one when we delve we can delve our uh instant sorcery cards and then the cards that are exiled with him when we attack, we can return them to our hand, just giving us a really slow way to return some of our powerful cards in the graveyard. And I've been really enjoying using my Elemental Whale. Just such, such a cool include for me. Super fun. All right, so now the last little bit of part we're going to go over is our artifacts, just some basic fun stuff. Soul Ring, Sky Diamond, Ornithopter. I've actually been really enjoying Ornithopter as a creature and a two-drop mana for anything. 
really good. It can block flyers, man. That's actually OP. That is like OP. It, it's, it's, okay, this is literally Arcane Signet, but it can block flyers. It can also die to removal, but even, we're not going to talk about that. Mind Stone, Pristine Talisman, Worn Power Stone, the Celestius. Uh, Replication Ring and Commander Sphere. In our deck, the Celestius is maybe the best mana rock because it allows us to continue looting throughout the turns and possibly loot multiple times uh, throughout every turn cycle. And then we can just activate it for three in our late game scenarios because if you didn't know... Um, the day night cycle is different it's like one of the way one of the ones it's like it changes if no one casts a spell and the other one changes if someone casts two spells so normally in late game scenarios you know no one's going to cast no spells on their turn unless they're just about to lose or something so then you'd pay three to switch it they would cast two and it would switch again so you get double loots for that which is just super nice super nice card i've been really enjoying it i'm hoping the rest of the community catches on to that card too because I feel like it's so good. I mean, I'm pushing it because I have a bunch of them. I don't want to sell them in like 10 years, but hey. All right, so lands. <laughs> so otherwise, it's just a ton of lands, ton of islands, a whole ton of islands, a whole ton of, ton of, ton of islands. That's why I love me some monocolor decks. And then we have uh, some of our random ones. We have a handful of our uh, cycling lands. So I figure we'll go through these really quick. That Desert the Mindful Remote Isle, Ash Barrens to find a basic land. And I think that's it for our cycling lands. Yeah, and then we have Rogue's Passage. This allows us to get into an aggressive attack. There's a handful of creatures that our power toughness equal to the amount of instant sorceries or cards in graveyard, things like that. It can just be gen generically huge. So we do want that Rogue's Passage to get that cheap attack in on our opponent sometimes. And we want the Evolving Wilds, Terramorphic Expanse to take advantage of the crabs. And then also the deck thinning, just generically. Guildless Commons to get a little bit of an extra tapping. We don't have the, the blue bounce land for this deck so that we could try to fully take advantage of Snap. And I think I'm going to be putting in a couple of the cards that are uh, untapped lands. I think Frantic Search is one where you draw a discard untapped lands. I, I have that somewhere. I'm just not sure. Uh, command Tower because I've just decided to put a Command Tower in a monocolor deck. We're not going to talk about it that much. And Misty Rainforest It's my proxy. I love these proxies. I always bring it up. You guys should uh, go and get them if you want them. Uh, you know, I have, I have my copies and all that jabs. But the proxies are on eBay. About 10, 15 bucks. Uh, you just look up like 15 land set, whatever, 10 land set, uh, altered art, and these will pop up for like 10, 15 bucks. Super great. It'll, it's going to let me, you know, keep my lands in good condition. Opal Palace, just a great land. It allows us to put a 1 1 counter on our commander by filtering a mana. Radiant Fountain gives us a little bit of life gain, and the Temple of the False God gives us a little bit of ramp inside of our land section. So, hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. And it's been your boy Kittens. This is my leader deck. And just as a side note um, from the gameplays that I've done, the deck that I've shown you, I'm going to change it. Uh, the thing that I'm going to change is I'm going to be putting in more spot removal cards. Uh, there was a point where I had an opponent that milled me for literally 40 cards. Like I, I milled like half of my deck in one turn and I only had like two or three instant sorceries in the graveyard. So what I need to do is mess around with a couple more of these spot removal cards and, and make it more heavy in the spot removal section with these little guys because that's kind of the main strategy. And you know, one of the other games, I actually played almost all the spot removal cards. I think I, I literally only had one spot removal card left in the deck. And uh, I, I did end up losing anyway, but so life. I'm, I'm going to move it around, change it around. Hope you guys have enjoyed the video and take those ideas in for your own Lear decks. Peace.